Hey everybody, so writing season's upon us here on the West Coast. It's usually from September when the, you know, the hot weather starts to kind of go away and the cool weather and the, the fog. And But this year it looks like it's just fire. So that's like what lets us know that it's uh, writing season. In this video we're going to talk about maybe on how for you backyard mechanics can get your bike going and ready in tip top shape for riding season. Today we're going to go visit Ellie Sleeve, a proud supporter of this channel. I'll just let you know it's kind of a commercial. So, but uh, we're going to go see what they do for people like you who work on your bikes in your garages and how they can uh, get your two stroke and four stroke freshened up for the uh, possible 2020, 2021. Let's get there, right? 2021. Okay, so we're here at Ellie's Sleeve and we're with Daniel and he runs the cylinder department. And this is the, uh, th this is a big department, right? Are you guys, you guys, oh, yeah. uh, this is a major service you guys have been doing for years, all to enable backyard garage mechanics to work on their bikes and uh, do it themselves. Where, the, but there is machining involved, right? So. You know, when you take your bike apart and let's say you're going to do a top end and you find the cylinder that's, uh, you know, scored or uh, it needs to be relined, that's kind of where you guys come in, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, guys will take the top end off, take their cylinder off the bike and uh, they notice, you know, some wear marks in there, some seizures, anything like that. Give us a call and then uh, whether talking through it, decide whether they need to send it in, run it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, they send it in to us, we'll inspect it and tell them what they need to do from there. Okay. And um, what other types of uh, cylinders can someone send in here? From like what kind of bikes to... Oh, we do everything from uh, little, little PW50, small nothing, you know, all the yeah. way up to... Uh, I mean, we do outboard motors, we do automotive stuff, we do everything. You guys do... Everything you guys do think like of. airplanes or oh, like yeah, yeah. anything really? Right? Yeah. So it's like the complete backyard. If you have like, well, not to make fun of you guys, but you guys do probably lawnmower sleeves too for some stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's that's pretty cool. Um, so that's okay. Well, that's a two-stroke, right? What is that one? Uh, this is the YZ250. That's a popular model. Yeah. Oh, yeah. this is the same cylinder from uh, what was it '99 to current. Okay. So. Oh yeah. And then uh, let's talk a little bit about four strokes. So you obviously do four stroke cylinders, but mm -hmm. then the heads. Do you guys have a head here you can show us that? Yeah, I got the valves in this one right here. But this one we actually already uh, come in a little closer there. Done the valve job on. Put this down. Okay, yeah, this one we uh, surfaced it, cut all the seats, got new valves in there. Originally it would look something like that. Just old and disgusting and needing, needing some love. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Get it freshened up. But so yeah, we'd come in and uh, cut these seats right here. Get these all brand new and then bead blast it all, surface it. Okay. Change the valve guides out if it needs it and then get it back running like new. That's cool. So what would you say is the most popular bike? Four stroke wise, that you see the most of in here. Oh, lately we've been seeing a lot of XR 650s. Really? There's tons of them. XR 650s. And um, not because they're not reliable, it's just because people ride the hell out of oh, them. Oh, they just, they just... ride them and ride them, and then, and then a lot of times guys just want to do them, keep them reliable. Yeah. You know, after so many hours, so many miles on them, they don't break down in the middle of nowhere and uh, <laughs> get huh. stuck out there. Now, do you guys see. What is some of the old bikes that you guys do? Because I, I I know you guys do a lot of vintage stuff oh, too, yeah. right? This one, this is a 85 XL 650 right here. Hmm. So that's actually a pretty old one. But yeah, we do we do Harley cylinders. Okay. Little Harley barrels that have the, the seats in them like that. We do everything. Now, is there, uh, is there something you can show us? I know you probably get some stuff that like people grenade things that are just like, is there ever a point where a cylinder is just like no good? Is there yeah. something you could show us here that's like really trashed? Yeah. That's uh this thing. This one is the cylinder I showed you earlier. Okay. It's a YZ250, but this one's a little bit beyond repair. There's, there's a point where you just don't even try. This skirt right here broke off, 
the piston grenaded and it just ate everything up in here. This one's been bored out a little bit because we're using it for something else, but as you can see, you know, in here, these things, they'll go and when they go like that, it's trash. Usually you have to rebuild the bottom end, the crank will be gone. Yeah. And, um, and then you'll usually let guys know this because oh, yeah. some guys don't know this. Mm -hmm. I mean, some guys will take their cylinders off and then realize like, hey, well, I, they'll just fix it. Is that a phone call that's kind of hard to do? Sometimes you gotta call guys and go like, hey look, your thing is like really bad. And when, it's, when it's a cylinder like this, it's kind of like a badge of honor. Like, hey man, good job. I don't know what yeah. you did, but <laughs> you did it right. <laughs> um, so now you also do cranks, right? Oh yeah. Let's uh, look at some cranks that you guys also rebuild. Yeah. So pretty much cranks and anything that, you know, the only thing you guys don't do is like say the cases, like you guys don't repair cases, right? Uh, we do. Yeah, no, we do cases oh, you too. Do. Yeah, we'll do uh, not as much just because a lot of times we're too busy to take that on. Yeah, and maybe uh, but, guys usually buy brand new. No, yeah, just, yeah, they'll buy a new case because a lot of times it's an expensive fix. If you get yeah. to that point where they blow a hole through the case or something, it's it's an expensive repair. Right. Um, but yeah, we'll get in rods this is off a of YZ85. They'll be locked up, seized up like that. Hmm. And then we'll oh, go. Yeah. yeah, and then we uh, we'll put a brand new rod onto that thing, and then ends up being nice and brand new. This one's off a of KX250. So they can send this whole thing in, yep. and then you guys rebuild it and yeah. send it back to them, so they can just then put it back into the the case. Exactly. So we'll push the pin out, take the webs apart, put a brand new connecting rod in with new bearings and everything, and push it back together. Then we true it and send it back and it's good to go. Awesome. Awesome. So that's cool. Uh, now, let's talk about um, like products. I, and I've, I've known you guys for years and I know you guys use, you guys like to push good, good brands um, and try to keep things uh, reliable. Yeah. Talk about like who are you using nowadays? Are you guys still using Pro X and stuff like oh, that? Oh yeah. We like Pro X, uh, Wozner, Weissco. We use Vertex. Mm -hmm. Try to stay away from some brands like Numura, some of those, you know, knockoff ones. Yeah. For rods and stuff, we use like Hot Rods. Okay. Uh, they're a really good brand. We we'll yeah. use Pro X rods. They're pretty good. Um, bearings, we always use. We always use like the Koyo bearings. Mm -hmm. Those are really good. Um, same thing, gaskets. We have our own gasket company that we get them from, or we use Kometic. Mm -hmm. They're a good gasket company. So, pretty much all the quality stuff. Yeah, we try to stay away from, you know, the. Knock off stuff, the cheap stuff, because it's it only lasts as long as uh, you know. Yeah, the and I, the I you assume in there. too, you probably get a lot of callbacks oh, too, yeah. saying that it's your fault, which oh, yeah. is probably not. Yeah, so we just try yeah. to get that out of the way and put in reliable stuff. What would you say as far as cylinder health? Uh, if you're gonna let everybody know, like, what can somebody do? to not send their cylinder into you. What what what's the best thing to make sure you're doing on on their part at home to keep their bikes If you want to run really safe, you could do like for two stroke stuff, they say every 20 hours or so. I go a little longer, but you could uh re-ring your piston, put new rings on there. Okay. Cuz those pistons on the uh the rings since you're running in dirt stuff, the dirt gets in there and it wears the rings out mm -hmm. and they actually get a really sharp lip on them. Okay. So the that's usually what ends up happening, the rings they get sharp. And then they start wearing out the cylinder wall, and then they'll catch and seize, and there you go. Hmm. And then um, the difference between uh, re sealing and re-sleeving, for years I've always known that you guys, with the re-sleeving, you save money because you can send it in and get it re-honed rather than getting a new Nicosil job. Exactly, yeah. The main thing, because Nicosiling is still good, mm -hmm. it gets it done, it runs good, but uh, once you do that, you can't bore it. You just gotta go for it and yeah. do it again. If you put a sleeve in it, you can uh, send it back in and we'll bore it up and it's like 90 bucks instead of spending another 300 to get it rebuilt. Okay. And you're good to go. Awesome. Well, there you go. Um, it's very simple. If you're working on your bike at home and you wanna get it ready for the riding season and get it you know, nice and tip top shape, you can call LA Sleeve at, uh, we'll leave all the information in the description box. Um, but they could just pretty much uh, go on the website. Do you guys have an email too? They can. Yeah, just info at LA Sleeve or davidlasleeve.com. Yeah. Okay. Either or. 
Great. All right, so this concludes the, the cylinder department here at Ellie Sleeve. We'll, uh, we'll talk to you guys later. Also want to let you guys know I have new t-shirt designs in the Broom Canada Adventure Store. The link is in the description box below. And then here's some other videos that I can take you and you can also check out. We'll see you guys next time.